Good morning. As we come to look at the birth of Jesus, let us go back for a moment through the Old Testament. Now, I'm not going to point out every reference to him, but the amazing thing is that in book after book, there was a reference to the coming of the Mashiach, a reference to the fact of where he would be born and even when he would be born. If you look, for instance, into the book of Daniel, you'll find that he gives an accurate estimate as to how long the people will have to wait before the Messiah comes. This is why when Jesus is finally challenged by the leaders of Israel, he is so angry with them. He says quite simply, if you had studied the scriptures, you would know who I am. You'd be able to identify me because the prophets explained who I was and what I would do. So we just look through it. Now, one of the interesting things about looking at these Old Testament uh, prophecies about Jesus and in the history of the Old Testament as well, you'll find that the people who wrote them down are not afraid to write down their good points, but they're not afraid as well to write down their bad points. For instance, the great King David, we're told quite simply that he saw a woman bathing he was lustful after her, he committed adultery with her, she became pregnant, and then in order to hide that particular fact, he had her husband killed so he could marry her and take her into his own home. Now this is all laid out, but of course as well it is also pointed out the repentance that came to these people as they tried to put themselves right with God. It's almost as if sin has an overpowering influence in our lives. And yet the answer to sin is to come back before God and to repent and to ask for his forgiveness. Now again, perhaps an amusing anecdote. I have, as I know, as I've mentioned before, two Jack Russell dogs. The last one we've had is still a puppy. He's just a year old. Now, I go out or I do something in the house and, and I come back downstairs or I come back into the house and they usually run to meet me. The black one, the young one, the puppy, he also runs to meet me. But there are occasions when I look for him and I find he is lying down in the corner of the room. And I say, OK, I don't know what you've done. I don't know where you did it but let's look around and find what's happened. And sure enough, I'll find a slipper torn up or a tie turned up, tor torn to pieces, or a bit of carpet chewed, or a piece of wood chewed. I know it's there, but when he sees me coming into the house, he knows, he knows he's done wrong. He's waiting to be reprimanded. I go to him and I keep, if he's in that attitude of saying, I'm sorry, I might give him a small tap. But if he's not, then I would give him a harder smack because these are things he shouldn't do and these are things he should learn that he shouldn't do. And in a sense, that's how God treats us. He's, he's like a father looking after us. And when we break his rules, break his regulations, it's almost as if he knows that we can't help it. We just can't help it. But if we come back to him over and over again and ask his forgiveness, then he is there. And this is the lesson that the Jews were learning about. The great prophet Isaiah was to say quite simply, he's like a father tending his children. He wants to train you. He wants to look after you, which means he is not going to overlook your misdeeds. He's going to discipline you for your misdeeds. But if you come before him in repentance, he will also forgive you for your misdeeds. The great apostle Paul, speaking to the early church on one occasion, said quite simply, I know what I should do, and I know what I should not do. But the amazing thing is, I'm always doing what I shouldn't do. And the things I know I should do, those are the things I fail in. Now, do you experience that? Well, then you experience the whole um, problem that humanity has faced throughout the years and individuals have faced as well. He, we cannot help it. There is something within us that almost overpowers us and controls us and makes us want to disobey. 
It is something which almost tries to drive us away from what God asks of us. So when you look at the Old Testament, we see all these prophecies referring towards Jesus. I mean, Isaiah actually comes out and says, he will be a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And yet all the time, the people who are expecting this great warrior on a horse with a sword in his hand who's going to drive out their enemies. But God said, listen to what the prophets are telling you. Look for the person I'm going to send. Because he will come, not as a mighty warrior, but he will, I, will, I myself will enter into my own creation. And because I want to experience everything that you're experiencing, I will be born as a human child. I will know what it's like to be a young infant. I'll know what it's like to be a teenager. I'll know what it's like to be a young man. And what is more, I will know what it's like to experience suffering as I see people living, suffering and dying around me. God experiencing our life that he can truly speak to us through Jesus. Amen.